for life. What's up, new people? I'm here Sham. with the main man. It's the champ. Make Frankie sure B. you tune into Pep Talk UK. We're talking boxing and big up, big up, big up, big up. My Thank you, AJ. It's time! Everyone's all good game, but it don't really face me. Nah. The man that ain't mad like Max, the way that I'm murky like HP. And them got what the slide on the back, but I'll like a baby. Oi oi, welcome to the Pep Talk UK Sports Podcast, the podcast that talks the major boxing and football news from around the globe, real points of view from a real panel, hashtag real talk on Pep Talk. Please subscribe to Pep Talk UK on iTunes and YouTube. Don't forget to like, share and comment. Now, I'm your host, Frankie B, and I'm joined by a sick panel. Firstly, I'd like to welcome back from the capital city of France, Paris, but now a resident in the home counties, it's Pascal. How you doing, bro? Hey, Frankie B, jusqu'ici, tout va bien. Everything is all good, my friend. How are you? Mate, I'm doing well, mate. I'm doing well. We had a, uh, we had a good out and out at um, York Hall last week. Uh, JD next gen yes it was very good but for me the highlights were the ring girls <laughs> I know you had your eyes on a particular uh, ring girl in a black tight skirt mate oh we 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 she was uh, very yeah. she looked very delicious and she looked like she could knock me out in one round <laughs> she looked magnifique <laughs> magnifique super she was lovely very nice spare me trino please uh, supply the digits and uh, we shall make contact yeah. on a serious note the boxing um, Reese Bellotti was impressive Chamberlain mm -hmm. he got the win he got the W against a tough opponent mm -hmm. and um, Ted Cheeseman you know he doesn't waste time he was on a show last last week and he said he doesn't get paid for overtime. Dispatched of his opponent pretty quickly, mate. He was very impressive, you know. All three, all three, you know, all three fighters, you know, displayed their skill level, and uh, you know, it was a very entertaining night of boxing. And uh, they're certainly, you know, stars on the rise, you know. And it was very good, and important for them to to have a platform like Sky Sports that can showcase their 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 talent. And we're just hoping that more people can actually, you know, uh, get to know them more intimately. But uh, yeah, they're very good. It was a very good night. It was lit. Right. Yes. Pascal, we've got a busy show. We've got to keep it moving. You want to shout out your social media before we oui, move on? Of course. Ma it's Pascal underscore de sad. Follow me Twitter and Instagram. Merci beaucoup. Cracking stuff. Right. Now I'd like to welcome for the first time on the show, it's the comedian slash vlogger. It's Ransom Bance. How you doing, bro? All good, bro. All good, man. What's going on? We caught up at the Haymaker Media Workout um, the other day, mate. What's what's been happening in general? Bro, I'm just busy, man. Just sorting everything out. Uh, just announced a live show for December. And just, yeah, man. Just staying on top of everything, man. Nothing but positive, positive things, man. That's it. That's All good. It. And a lot of your videos, you literally just say what's in your mind and you know I think people appreciate that sometimes when someone can be the voice you know like the voice of the streets no I hear that completely bruv like that's just all it is isn't it that's just my point of view and uh, I don't know a lot of people ain't, ain't really brave enough to speak their mind and put their neck on on the chopping board but yeah it's not a problem for me yeah, you look like you, you look like you can handle yourself anyway, so it's all good. Yeah, I'm cool, bro. Like, do you know what I mean? I make sure I stay sharp just in case. Just in case, bro. Before it gets serious. That's well, it. So your show, um, how can how can people get tickets? Well, I'm so I'm putting tickets on sale at the end of the month on the 27th um, on my Facebook page, um, and it's going to be on Dice the app as well. But the show is not till December. Okay, cracking, cracking. So Rance, we're going to keep it moving. Do you want to shout out your social media? Yeah, you can just... You just type Rance and Rance into Facebook. You'll see my official Facebook page. And then I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. The same um, same handle, DS Rance and Bance. You can also just 
Just type in Google, mate. It's all there. It's all there. Not hard to find me, unfortunately. Man's everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Uh, keep I keep bumping into rants, you know. Cool. All good. All good. Right, we're going to move on. Now, finally, I'd like to welcome the young bull from Bermondsey who spits that fire. It's Joey Bates. How you doing, bro? How you doing, bro? You right, yeah? Yeah, I'm all good. I'm all good, mate. What, what's the latest of the music, mate? I'm just working. Um, I've just released a new single called Life Over Circumstances. <laughs> I dropped the video two weeks ago. I'm um, just doing good. I'm shooting another video called Streets or a Lady on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So I'm just staying busy working. That should be my last video release for the year, so putting a lot of energy into it. <clears throat> okay, you got any mixtapes out there? Um, I've got a mixtape from 2015. Mm-hmm. At the moment, I've only been releasing, I've released, I think, four or five singles this year. And hopefully next year I'll be releasing an EP, depending on what what stage I'm at. Okay, all good. So how can the listeners and people in general get access to your music? On which platforms? Um, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music, all, all platforms I'm out there. Just type in Joey Bass and I'll pop up. Cool. I, I, hear, the, I hear the bass in that voice, you know. I hear the bass in that voice, bro. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm so <laughs> ill right now. I'm suffering. <laughs> but you're a soldier, you're a warrior. But you know what, Joey yeah. Bass? Like, you come on the show, mate, and you know, any artist or musician that comes on the show, we always ask for them to bless us with some bars. Now, I know you're ill, no. but I know you got it within you. Yeah. Yeah, Joey. Yeah, yeah, spit that fire, bro. Yeah. I've been trapping on the block since 05. Ain't I? I'm a, I don't know, I. I'll be cutting through the city in the fly ride. Got your yeah, MR, that's the drive by. Got the in the safe because of my life. Bad, wanna quiet because I got no time. By the hating on the kid, let the boys shine. Paparazzi taking shots, that is trap time. Give up about getting rubber bands. Yo. Yeah. That's a little piece yeah. of my new single life over circumstances, which is out now. Support the thing, Spotify, Apple Music, all the that. Nice take over, yeah. Joey Bass, my G. Come on, bro. Do you, you want to shout out your social media, bro, before we keep it moving? Joey Bass, NTS, all platforms, same handle. Cracking. Right, guys, going to move on to the boxing. Ladies and gents, for the fight fans locked in, for the football fans locked in. Now it's time for some real talk on pep talk. Let's go. Yes, we ready. Let's get into it. It's real talk. It's pep talk. So we're going to start with the boxing and breaking this week was Anthony Joshua will take on Carlos Takam on October the 28th as a replacement for the injured Karap Pulev. Now Pascal... Way has Carlos Takam managed to get five numbers plus the bonus ball? Well, you know, very <laughs> pleased for a fellow French uh, person, you know, uh, Carlos Takam. He's won the lottery. Won. He's won the lottery, he, mate. He's one of mine, you know. He's, he's French by way of Cameroon, so he, he's uh, certainly the, the the lucky the lucky heavyweight boxer. I mean, Frankie, can, can you imagine? <laughs> A lot of boxers, even retired boxers, want, wanted to get that fight, you know. I'm sure that uh, David Haver has been kicking himself, you know, because that could have been him, you know. That could have been a very good payday and an opportunity to go straight at the belts, even if he won or not. But Carlos Takab, uh, you know, is going to be the, the, benef- the beneficiary of a lot of money. You know, I don't believe that he'll win the game. He'll win the fight against um, Anthony Joshua. But what is uh, what is certain is that he's a come forward fighter. Mm-hmm. You know, he is a bit like immigration. You know, he keeps on coming, and uh, <laughs> he's going to be uh, he's, he's going to be very difficult for AJ to to certainly take him off him over the first couple of rounds. So he'll be competitive, but I expect AJ to dispatch of him in the middle rounds because you know, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. You know, at this level of boxing, you got to prepare. You know, and the preparation at this level, you know, are somewhere upwards of 200,000 pounds, you know, for paying the right staff, the diet and 
the training camp and I don't believe that Carlos has had the opportunity to train as well as he wanted to so it's a foregone con conclusion but believe you me Carlos would make it very difficult for AJ for the first three rounds you know anybody that do not know Carlos Takam I recommend that they watch the fight against Alexander Povetkin I mean mm. Povetkin won we know that Povetkin has a history of juicing so you know uh, so Povetkin did stop him on a, on a 10th round in, but he was a very entertaining fight and he was fight of the year so please guys uh, have a look at Carlos and uh, he fought a very brave fight yeah. <clears throat> but, but some people say that he is uh, not as bad as what you know um, critics might say because he went 12 rounds of uh, Joseph Parker mate oh, oh yes of course and he made Joseph Parker look very bad Joseph Parker actually <laughs> had to I mean he did you know if you, if you saw the fight Frankie B you'll agree with me that uh, Joseph Parker you know was, was very concerned at one point because as I said before uh, you know Carlos does, does not stop coming forward and he has a very awkward style where he likes to throw you know swing swinging punches you know um, mm -hmm. and he's, he's a stocky stocky guy he's, he looks a bit um, stocky lad he looks a bit like a heavyweight version of uh, James Stoney you know so he's He's quite awkward, but he doesn't have the power that his body looks like, if that makes sense. You know, you don't see him knocking out a lot of his opponents, but he's certainly very much going to be an aggressive, comfort fighter, which I think is good to see AJ perhaps go on the back foot and see whether we can see him b uh, boxing off, of, you know, of his back leg, you know, and, uh, but I expect AJ to land some good straight right hands and some uppercuts, which is what Povetkin was able to do and eventually stopped him. So if um, if AJ's you know has has had a chance to review any of his fights, he put probably I can see the uppercut being an uh, you know one of the decisive um, mm -hmm. punches during that uh, that bout. Takam being a big stocky lad, and Takam likes yam. <laughs> he certainly <laughs> does. <laughs> he certainly does. But look, it's going to be a cracking fight. I think for for the value of AJ, another knockout on his belt makes him look even better. And uh, you know, and let's let's be honest, we are waiting for the much anticipated uh, unification fight against the anti Wilder. So if that fight can happen next year, you know, I, I think that the momentum for AJ is to make sure that uh, he dispatches of Carlos in good good fashion. You know, puts on an entertaining show. And uh, the, the 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 rest of his journey could just uh, you know potentially be Las Vegas next year against Deontay Wilder, or peut-être of course they could bring him back to um to to Wembley Stadium. You know that would be a cracking fight again. You know most of the American fighters got to come over here because you know UK boxing is lit right now. And this this is where the money is. Ninety thousand in Wembley, mate. Like the Klitschko right. fight. It's right. all right. about it's all about the fights over here, mate. That's where the money is. Right. Let's. That's the case. Now, Rance, um, Rance and that's a different opponent for, for Joshua as he has to fulfill his um, IBF mandatory. Yeah. Would you say potentially this is an easier fight than Pulev? Um, some might disagree or agree. Yeah, it's supposed to be a tougher fight than Pulev, really, like, to be honest, even though the rankings are side, it's probably a tougher fight, man. Like, Pulev. You know, I, I had him down to dispatch a pool level within a couple of rounds, to be honest. Who knows the most? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think either of them, man. I think they're both bums, really, like, considering that. <laughs> like, like, I can't be bothered um, personally with all the nonsense, mate. Like, it's just like, that division's shocking me, man. Like, it doesn't matter which way you dress it up, man. Joseph Parker's a bum as well, and he's got a belt. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> it's just one of them ones where. He has no right to have a belt. Like I don't think then there's no era of heavyweight boxing that guy could have held a belt apart from now. So do you know what I mean? It's like it's just all a bit mad. I just wanna see him dispatch of this tack and, and then we look into next year really, man. You know what Good. I mean? But this fight is a it's straightforward. It's a, isn't no, it? it's a no it's a no contest, mate. This guy's turning up for his paycheck. It is lucky man though. I mean you wake up in the morning, you get the message, yeah, you fight Joshua. Yeah, it's all about, you know, absolutely. moving house, mate, you know, moving to Beverly Hills. Oh, absolutely, man. He's landed. He's absolutely landed with this fight, man. Do you know what I'm saying? So, he just wants to hope that he leaves the ring in one piece and he'll be happy. With his faculties. But, That's it. But you talk about the heavy, heavyweight division um, being a lot weaker now. Why do you think that is? Do you think because of Tyson Fury vacating, that's kind of just opened the doors to a lot of uh, weak champions or... 
Is it just the yeah. era that we're going through? It has definitely opened the doors because you would think that Parker wouldn't have a belt otherwise. You know what I mean? But saying that, like, I don't know, man. Tyson Fury, even the way Tyson Fury lives anyway, like, he's a very good boxer, but the guy's not serious, man. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't box again. And without Fury, because we have Fury, AJ, and Wilder, obviously mm-hmm. because Litchko's retired, like, those are the only three like top of the three boxers and now one of them is you know what I mean done for drugs and we don't know if he's coming back there's only two of them so if Wilder's not fighting AJ you know what I mean the closest thing you've got to any kind of competition is Ortiz who ain't fighting mm-hmm. do you know what I mean and then it's, it's, it's high blood pressure it's bothering him but there you go and, and who <laughs> so do you know what I'm saying like and you look at the, the um, contrast and the difference in quality between a Pulev do you know what I mean and an AJ like mm, I had yeah. all teased up to beat um, Wilder anyway I don't wait, wait Wilder I think Wilder's poor mate. those wild I mean, punches I think, I think Wilder just looks like an NBA player like in, in boxing gloves if he, fights, <laughs> if he fights AJ I'd be surprised if he goes past round 4 mate I saw Molina wobble Wilder man if AJ catches him he's going to bed mate yeah yeah he rocked him and he, he, was, he did start dancing for a moment yeah yeah he wobbled him man I'm telling you Wilder ain't got a chin and obviously He's rangy, he's got the long limbs, so he tends to keep people away, but AJ can walk him down and just knock him out, really, to be completely honest. I think that all this nonsense the Americans are talking about, about AJ dodging him, it's got nothing to do with that. Eddie Hearn's just trying to build up the fight mm-hmm. and That's make it. it's a business. from it. Yeah, yeah, because AJ can walk through Deontay Wilder, man. His boxing fundamentals mm. are so poor that AJ would see them windmills coming and he would just knock him clean out, man. I, I, it's not even a contest. It would make sense if if one of them took the belt of uh, Joseph Parker. Then I they think fought. AJ's it's bigger do that. Way. From what Eddie Hearn said, Ian, um, the next fight for for Joshua is going to be um, Joseph Parker. If um, would Parker would the fight of the winner out of. White and Parker because that's the fight they're trying to make. Mm-hmm. Or do you know what? Another bit to the plot. The plot is maybe Dillian White fights um, Deontay Wilder down the line. Then you get the Joshua and Dillian White rematch. Now, how yeah, but, how sick um, would that be? It would, but Deontay Wilder doesn't want any of Dillian White because I I'd have, I'd I'd fancy White to beat him. That's how how much I don't rate. Um, Deontay Wilder, Wilder, man, he's he's a bum, man. He's one of the worst technical boxers I've seen. Him and Parker are terrible, terrible. <laughs> like Wilder beats them both. I mean, um, um, Dylan beats them both, man. To be honest, I think he will probably take the belt from Parker, and then he will fight AJ or um, Wilder will or Dylan will will not get the fight with Parker, and then AJ will knock him out and take the belt. But either way, um, Parker's losing that belt. Um, in the next six months, mate. Unless he's got, unless he's got one of those judges that were at the last um, Fury Fury nah, fight. Nah, nah, he's going to sleep if he fights um, Dylan or AJ. Yeah, he's not going to the court. To help him, bro. <laughs> judges won't be able to help him, man. His footwork's terrible. Like he's just clumsy. He's awful, man. That that fight with Fury is one of the worst fights I've seen in my whole life. Yeah. No, I mean it was embarrassing that, for that, boxing. That was like watching England play. You know, I, I, I draw, I draw comparisons. Man. It was, it was, it was shocking. Do you know what I mean? That they should be disqualified for both and send them home. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Now, Joey, um, are you a big Anthony Joshua fan? Will you be locking in for the fight against uh, Takam? Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's his first fight since um, the fight in April, right? Against Klitschko? Yeah, I'll be definitely looking in. I'm, I'm a big supporter of Anthony Joshua. Yeah, you, you see his uh, ring music when he came out last time to Scraps? <laughs> yeah, that was kind of lit for the culture. Have a word with him, see if we can get some Joey Bass. <laughs> get some Joey Bass, yeah. We need a bit of that. Well, well, we move on. Now, George Grove advanced to the semi finals of the World Boxing Super Series with a super body shot to get the win over Jamie Cox. Now, we have the tantalizing prospect of George Grove versus Chris Eubank Jr. next year. Now, Pascal. Way. We are going to witness yet another mouthwatering fight. This is almost boxing porn, my friend. You know, Frankie B, I had a very interesting conversation yesterday with Lionel Sidofia, and he's of the opinion that the fight may not happen because it's a big risk for 
Chris Eubank Jr. Now, I'm of the opinion that the fight will happen because it's a very big and important yes. fight for British boxing and also for both fighters. You know, we have seen a, a rejuvenated George Groves on Saturday night against Jamie Cox. You know, a very aggressive come forward, Jamie Cox. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, unfortunately for JB Cox, you know, he, his comfort aggression was very well timed and very well calculated. And I believe that the experience of George Groves gave him the advantage, you know. And Jamie Cox, that, yeah, he kind of just set him up, didn't he? Just cracking shot to the body. And, and uh, you know, you can see the changes boxing style since he's been with Shane, Shane McGuigan, who certainly tend to emphasize more on the defensive abilities of George Groves. You know, George Groves fought a lot of the fight, you know, going backwards, you know, and we never really seen George Groves do that. Normally, he's more of an offensive fighter, mm -hmm. but but I saw a very lively George, George Groves, and I think he'll be a very good yeah. fight if he can uh, if he can keep the the the. The, the form that he has now He didn't take much punishment also during that fight So I expect the fight to be an exciting one You know um, It'll be very close It'll be very close Because both fighters Have got about 27, 26 fights each You know uh, George Gross has had some, some very b bad, bad defeats Yeah, the so bad knockout Carl Froch yeah, yeah, the KO and, and I felt that perhaps That could have been the end of his career But it seems to me that he's got uh, a lot of fuel in the tank yeah. and it's an opportunity for him to you know to showcase that he's got the, the ability to at least reach the final um, but as for Chris Eubank he's got all to win you know for him is another bet potentially and also it's an opportunity to you know to also face Callum Smith in the final mm. which I'm pretty sure will will happen and another super you know British fight so it, it's certainly going to be a cracking cracking fight and I think whichever way it goes you know we, we, whichever boxer wins wins that fight in, in next year you know will be going on to very important things so I'm looking forward to it it's going to be amazing we have to go to that match Frankie B I think it's important we book some tickets you know we have to we have to get Rance Rance and Bance along as well you know Joey Bass will yeah, go down course. there yeah, yeah, we have to go. You know, it'll be a very good fight. There's a lot of venues being touted, you know, uh, outdoor fights, you know. Uh, um, yeah, we know that George Cross is a Chelsea fan, so he could potentially be at the Chelsea Stadium, Stamford Bridge. You know, uh, Fulham Stadium has also been, you know, considered the Emirates. You know, I would prefer it to be at the Emirates for various reasons. <laughs> Look, there's certainly going to be a cracking atmosphere. The build-up will be fantastic, and I just cannot wait for it. But my money is on uh, Chris Eubank Jr. Now, Rance, um, would you say you've been uh, uh, impressed by the, the World Boxing Super Series? It's been pretty decent, hasn't it? It's been all right, but it was, no one's really fought anyone yet. So it was one of them ones where they just had to get the formalities out of the way. Mm -hmm. Now it started, you know? Yeah. And you're going to see Gross take on Chris Eubank Jr. And I'm literally, uh, I, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm excited. Junior, junior, I was, I, I'm looking forward to seeing Junior walk through it, man, to be honest. Like... I don't, I don't understand what a lot of people saw. I saw the Groves Cox fight, mate. Mm -hmm. To me, yeah. like, um, Groves got wobbled, mate, in the first two rounds. I don't know why people yeah. are conveniently forgetting that. Yeah, like, yeah. Giza got, the geezer got wobbled and he was, he was in survival mode and he managed to hang in there. With a body he caught, shot. Yeah. He caught Cox with a very good body shot, but he weren't winning that fight before that, that body shot. Mm -hmm. No one could tell me he was, cause he wasn't. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I, I don't really know what a lot of people are saying, are seeing when they think that, um, George Groves has improved. He ain't really improved, man. He's always been a good boxer, like, he's always mm -hmm. been a good boxer. There's always been questions about his chin. Yep. There's been questions about his heart and his engine. And he, and he still doesn't have a chin. And he still doesn't have an engine, mate. And Chris Eubank will just take him into the middle rounds and just dispatch him with me. That's just what's gonna happen. Chris Eubank can throw 90 punches around for 12 rounds. George Groves ain't got 12 rounds in him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's it. He's still, he's still, well, with well, Eubank Jr. is still fairly unproven at the weight. Yeah, but they say he's unproven at the weight. Yeah, he's not a super middleweight. You know what I mean? He's not a super middleweight. He's a middleweight. But the thing is, he's he's not um, a one-punch knockout artist anyway. It's mm -hmm. the accumulation of shots and it's his, volume. Act, his yeah. it's the activity and his volume that causes people trouble and he's got a bloody big chin on him mate he spars heavyweights and like heavyweights all the time he can take a punch do you know what I mean he's never even been wobbled in his career let alone knocked down do you know what I mean so George Groves ain't got the power to, to knock Chris Eubank out so was he, he has to box him for 12 rounds and keep away from him and I don't see that happening mate 
You know what I mean? I really don't see that happening. I just see Chris walking him down, making him fight. He's not going to try and box him on the outside. He doesn't need to. They do say that about Eubank Jr. That he does struggle to, you know, to, to fight on the back foot. You know, as as with the fight with uh, Billy Joe Saunders. Yeah, but the Billy Joe Saunders fight. The only reason why he lost that is because he started the fight too late. The, the geezer didn't turn up till the fifth round. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You watch, you watch that Billy um, Joe Saunders fight. The second half of the fight, Billy Joe Saunders was hanging on for his life in, in, in the eleventh or twelfth round. <laughs> the guy wanted out. That's why he doesn't want the rematch. Or else we would have had the rematch already. Let's be honest. Because <laughs> wh- wh- who is Saunders for in the last what? Since the Eubank fight, how inactive has he been? He could have got that rematch. William Monroe, William Monroe Jr. And, his... and they were just posing. Do you know what I'm saying? That William Monroe Jr. In the fight. They were both just standing looking at each other for 10 rounds. Yeah, yeah. Willie, Willie Monroe was poor. He was poor. He was poor that night. No doubt. But both of them are counter punches, and neither one of them wanted to throw a punch. It was, it was, a, it was an embarrassing fight. I fell asleep. But you got potentially, I think, announced you got uh, Lemieux versus uh, Billy Joe. Yeah, that's so a very dangerous fight for Billy Joe. Sorry, you can punch. Lemieux can punch yeah. for sure. It's a dangerous fight for Billy Joe Saunders, man. Make no mistake about it. And as for the nonsense that Bell you was talking about, Callum Smith, Groves and Eubank both. Stop Callum Smith comfortably, man. Callum Smith's overrated for me, mate. I don't rate him at all. Mm-hmm. He I has, think he's yeah. he just gas. That's it. He's he's rangy and he's long and that. But Eubank stops him. Groves stops him. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. Callum Smith's at his level. So you're winning the tournament, World Boxing Super Series. Uh, what Chris yeah, Eubank, Eubank Jr. Jr. Wins, all day? Eubank Jr. wins that, mate. Whoever wins the fight between Eubank and Groves wins the series I don't give Smith a chance and if everything goes barring anything ridiculous I don't see George Groves beating you back you don't have you don't have the ingredients mate. <laughs> Uh, Joey, do you think Eubank Jr. is uh, rightfully the favourite for this tournament? As Ransom Bant says. I think so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think a lot of people struggle against Eubank. You know what I mean? Because of his yeah. speed. His speed. He's got a good chin. Great mm-hmm. engine on him. I've and, seen him. I've seen him. I've seen him spar as well. And yeah, man, he's, he's a problem. I, I hear him sparring. He literally tries to take everyone's head off. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> he does, literally. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I think, I think with Eubank Jr., I think, you know, initially he had that pressure of his dad when he started his career. But slowly, he's kind of coming to his own, you know? And I think he wants to make his own history in the game, you know? I don't think it's strictly about money. I think he wants mm. to leave that legacy. That's not about money. He's got money, man. He's got P. He's got P. Yeah, he grew up with money. It's not about money. <laughs> In the mean streets of Brighton. <laughs> nah, that's it, bruv. Like, nah, he can fight, man. The kid can fight. It's the same with DeGale as well. He got that early loss to Groves. And look, look at their career since then. Yeah, DeGale's a G. You know, that's, nah, that's my DeGale's, guy. Yeah. DeGale's been a better boxer than George Groves the whole time. But the thing is, like that fight, it was one of them ones where I reckon that um, DeGale's coach lost him that fight. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There was no plan B, man. Like as soon as he saw what Rose was doing, he should have switched it up. And yeah, he yeah. And he should have changed it. But McDonald ain't a good boxing coach, man. He's a good conditioning coach, but tactically, man, he flopped that fight. You know what I mean? I would have left him after that fight. But obviously, him and James have been together long, and he'll stay with him and that. But I would have left him after that, man, because he shagged him in that fight. It was a close fight, though. It was a close fight, you know. Yeah, yeah. but James is so much better than him as a boxer, and you've seen what where the careers have gone since then. Like, yeah, Groves has got a world title now, but to me, he's not he's not really world level for me. So, it's one of them ones where I don't really know what he's good at, apart from he's got a decent jab. That's it. <laughs> like, he, he don't have an engine. He's not particularly quick. Like, do you know what I mean? He's got a good jab. And it's just like, for me, when you look at boxing, obviously, styles make fights for a reason. The only way you're beating Eubank, yeah, is if you're quicker than him and... Um, Grove seems to think he is but he's not <laughs> you know what I'm saying Billy Joe Saunders is fleet footed and he was getting in and out and hitting Eubank and, and just sticking and moving he's like, George Groves ain't sticking George Groves ain't sticking and moving for 12 rounds he ain't got the engine <laughs> you know what I mean you just walk him down in the middle rounds and just blast his head off I don't see anything different than that he'll get stopped his heart will go probably between 8 to 12 rounds you know what I mean he'll get pressure on him and then he'll just he's, he's gone mate it should be a uh... A cracking fight. I, for one, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Pascal, who's your winner Wait. of this tournament? 
Well, you know, I believe that Chris Eubank Jr. will win the fight. You know, for um, for similar reasons that uh, that Hans and Benz has cited. But you know, the the most important uh, attribute of Chris Eubank Jr. is his work rate. You know, he's very athletic. He possesses natural ability. You know, he's also very quick off the jab. But also, his combination punches is really what will overwhelm George Groves. And I don't see George Groves being able to maintain that level of physicality for a, for a, a very long time. You know, George Groves being the the the, the physical bigger person, perhaps would, would probably try and and use that power by 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 uh, by trying to to bully. Uh, you know, Chris Eubank Jr. If he tries to 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 fight him and to box him and to certainly try to 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 make Chris Eubank Jr. box off the back foot, then you could potentially have some some early successes. But uh, you know, in the middle to late rounds, you know, Chris Eubank Jr.'s you know stamina levels are quite exceptional. You know, he trains very very hard. You know, I, fo- I follow him on on Instagram and uh, and various social media channels, and he's always training. You know, and he takes his his uh, boxing very seriously. And uh, I believe that on the, on, the, on, the, on the basis of that, you know, it's going to be very difficult for George Gross to assert himself and to, and to box 12 rounds, you know, convincingly. So I can probably see George Groves winning the first few rounds, but towards the middle to late rounds, you know, I can see, you know, Chris Eubank Jr., you know, applying a lot more pressure. And if he sees vulnerabilities, there may well be a stoppage. But I don't, I think it'll be a very competitive fight. I don't believe that it'll be a one way, you know, uh, for con- con- conclusion. I think it'll be very competitive, you know, just because of the build up. And I think George Groves will apply himself in the training. I think he will train very hard. And I don't believe that, uh, you know, we will see uh, George Groves fade in a way very quickly. I believe they'll be very competitive for, for at least eight, eight to nine rounds of the fight. Ooh, we look forward to it. Now it's interview time. And now it's fight week. Joe Joyce will make his pro debut, taking on Ian Lewinson at the O2 Arena in London. This week, Pep Talk UK invaded the media workout to hear from both fighters and also those who will feature on the undercard. First up, let's hear from the former Olympian, Joe Joyce, who spoke about his preparations for his pro debut and fighting under the bright lights of the O2. It's Pep Talk UK, Frankie B, and I'm joined by the Man Mountain, Mr. Joe Joyce. How you doing, guys? Yeah, all good, mate. So, Joe, you're looking war ready. Um, big, big debut in front of you. You haven't picked an easy opponent, but you look ready. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I've had a great camp. Um, I've been out in Vegas, like taking in the taking the things behind the scene there with the Canelo Golovkin. Um, I saw the. I went to LA, drove down to LA, and um, saw behind the scenes with Lenaris Campbell. Um, had some great sparring with Bermain Stavern and Dominic Brazil. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all it's all going good. How, how did the work go with Dominic Brazil? Ah. <laughs> Hard work, yeah? Yeah, very well, yeah, very well. So, uh, the way I was doing in sparring is uh, the future looks bright. Like I said, you haven't picked an easy debut. Probably like to do it, you know, you like the challenge, I can see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I like the challenge because, you know, it's, there's no better feeling than, you know, to be in the ring with someone who's good and actually beat that person. It's a lot, it's a lot better than having someone who's not that good and you beat them easy and then I kind of like, oh, well, you know, all that training f- for what? Um, so, yeah, it's, gr- it's great to, that I'm starting as a main event, a 10-round on my debut. I don't think it's been, I don't, I don't, has it been, has it been done before? I don't know. So, um, yeah, it's good to start with a bang and uh, it's, he's, he's no slouch, so, so it's going to be a, you know, a great first fight. You know, the, my last fight was in the Olymp- Olympic final, so... Um, similarly with him, he, I think his last fight was. Um, uh, his last fight was, I think, was Dillian White. Yeah, Dillian White, yeah, Dillian White, which was like a year ago as well. So it should be uh, should be good. He's had he's had twelve and three as a pro. I've had fifteen WSB. So it should, it should be uh, should be a good uh, good. Evening. Should should be lit. Should be lit. You been you just come from America. Should be lit. Should be lit. <laughs> All right, Joe, um, thanks for your time, mate. All the best come October the 20th, mate. Nice one. Right. Now let's hear from Ian Layamout Lewinson, followed by his esteemed trainer, Don Charles. 
Pep Talk UK, it's Frankie B. I'm joined by an old friend who will fight this Friday at the O2 Arena. It's Ian Liam Mount Lewis. How you doing, bro? Ian's doing great. Ian's great. I can't wait till Friday now. I'm just excited and I can't wait. It's been a long time since I've seen you, but um, last time out, you put on a hell of a show against Dillian White. You show that, you know, you can go into the trenches and, you know, even at short notice, you can put on a performance. Now, this time, you're fighting against uh, a massive giant in Joe Joyce. How do you plan to slay a giant? The same way I've done Hoffman. Hoffman's a lot taller than him and I dealt with Hoffman. At the end of the day, I'm bringing my um, bow and arrow on me and I'm going to take him out. You look, you look like you're in fantastic um, condition. You look like you know, you've uh, did a lot of hard training. Um, how has preparations gone in general? No, I could tell you the, I could tell you the seriousness of which I've gone to this fight. Yeah, mm-hmm. I actually went with a load of my friends into my local KFC and my local McDonald's, and we orchestrated a fake fight. So I got banned from there. So now I'm not allowed to go into my local McDonald's or KFC. So therefore, I'm not allowed to eat fast food. So that's the that's the severity of which I was taking this fight with. So you can see, and that's the reason why I've dropped so much weight. So no acne and saltfish, nothing. Nah, nah, that's not it, mate. I've been dealing with, I've been working with a company called Fit Food, Fit Kitchen. They've been supplying my food, um, high protein, um, high protein foods, taste lovely. Yeah, and the weight's going, the weight's going, and I just can't wait to get fried out of the way now. So in terms of, uh, in terms of the man himself, um, Joe Joyce. Now he's making his pro debut, and you've been in the game for more than a minute. Do you think experience will tell on the night itself? No, but every fight is a fight at the end. There, it's a matter of adapting to what's in there. Obviously, the more fights you have, is the more fight experience you have. And I think he's had a lot of fights. I've had a lot of fights. So when two people are very experienced, I don't think it comes so much down to who's the more experienced. It comes down to who hits who first, and especially when the two people can punch. And I think it may come down to that on the night. So you're going to recite a bit of LL Cool J. Mama says knock you out. Well, he's going to get knocked out. He's going to get put to sleep, man. I'm telling you, I'm going to. I'm actually going to put him to sleep. I'm going to lay him out. Ian Lewison, thanks for your time, mate. All the best come fight night. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant, mate. Brilliant. Pep Talk UK, it's Frankie B. And I'm joined by the trainer of Ian Lay Him Out Lewison. Mr. Don Charles, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing very well today, and how are you? I'm doing well, mate. All the better for seeing you. <laughs> now, it's getting close. It's getting close. Getting real close. Yeah, Don't, it's getting close, it's getting close to fight night, baby. Yeah. As a, you know, Sir Alex Ferguson, the ex-man chess United uh, manager, his favourite saying is that squeaky bum time. Squeaky bum time. <laughs> Now, don't know about you, but I'm, I'm buzzing for this fight. I'm buzzing, man. I know you I'm are. I'm buzzing, trust me. S- not just me, the fighter is buzzing. That's what's very worryingly for Joe Joyce. The fighter is buzzing. And when Ian's buzzing, I know the look in his eyes. I know when he's up for something. He's up for this. Yeah. And I know he's been training at Punch London for a while with you, so he'll be fully prepared. Is that right? Uh, because of the notification he was given, which, I, again, every time I do an interview, I make a point of thanking David, genuinely thanking David Hay, because he's a decent human being. To give, because they're his, his friend was friends with Ian. They were amateurs together, um, so they've known each other for a long time. And to give his friend and treat his friend with decency by giving him the notification he's given him, I thank him all day long. Because this kid has never been since he's been with me for five years. He's never been given this type of notification. The most he's ever been given is five weeks' notice. Every fight he's had whilst being with me, five weeks' notice. Cracker so so. Talking from a tactical point of view, now there's there's two factors here. You're fighting against a bigger, taller man. Now Ian made reference to a taller fight that he's you know that he's defeated in the past. How would you approach this giant of a man, this giant in Joe Joyce? Quite simple. Ian is more effective against taller oppositions. His style is horrible. His style is all wrong for tall people. All wrong. It's impetuous. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Quote Mike Tyson. It's all wrong. All wrong for Joe Joyce. So, just to conclude, is it going to be a, a tough debut for Joe Joyce? I'm afraid so, because, you know, Joe is a lovely kid, but we're talking uh, about fighting now. He's a lovely kid, and I hope that this doesn't destroy his uh, professional career, because he, he's going to receive a devastating knockout, yeah? And how would he come back from that as a professional? It's going to take some doing, yeah? He's got the right people around him, love... Uh, it takes a lot to bring somebody back from, you know, especially this is your, this is, he hasn't even got going yet, you know, which is, I'm still scratching my head as we speak, 
Do you, do you mind that? The fact that he's taken Ian Lewison as his first pro fight? Well, I don't think he's got any say in it, if, if I'll be honest with you. I don't think I, I don't think Joe Joyce woke up one morning and said to David, hey, get me Ian Lewison for my debut. I believe his team have Im- imposed Ian Lewis on him and he's the type of character he's such a nice gentleman he won't refuse it he was just say, oh, you're alright then no man well it'll certainly be interesting um, thank you Mr Don Charles and um, we're going we're gonna to catch up with a bit of a jalof at Punch London in the near future <laughs> when we win trust me I'm going to take you to Mama Calabar do you know where that is Mama Calabar Mama hold me on it they're actually in Wembley now. Oh, in Wembley. Yeah, they, they were in age where they moved to Wembley. Yeah. I'm going to take you there and feed you up. <laughs> Bottoms up for some jollof rice, you know, and some supermop. Some pounded yam business. That's what we're dealing with. Wicked, my chi, my chi. Don, Mr. Don Charles, thank you, mate. Should be a cracking night. Right. Time to focus on those who will feature on the undercard. Let's hear from the light heavyweight who was 6 0. It's Dwayne Hotshot. Sinclair. Pep Talk UK I joined by someone I'd consider a friend. I've seen his career develop. He's now Mr. Big Time on the Haymaker undercard. It's Mr. Dwayne Hotshot Sinclair. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. Yeah, we're ready to go. Thank you. Yeah. Fight night's upon us. We're ready to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. How's training been? It's been brilliant. I've, I've made weight about almost two weeks ago, so it's been concentrating on the, the boxing side of things. But a lot of my, my, my camps has been um, trying to juggle the two, making weight and um, and uh, the boxing. I think um, because I usually make weight so easily, I always leave it to the last minute. So this time, got the weight done and just been concentrating on the boxing. It's good. In terms of your career, you've been fighting on some of the small halls like your pool, which are prestigious venues. You're now moving on to the Indigo at the O2. Uh-huh. Is that going to give you some butterflies? Yeah, it, it's it's new atmosphere. It gives you a new, a new, like you say, a new lease of life, as it does, so to speak. Um, it definitely a different show, uh, high profile boxes, and I want to show that I, that I am supposed to be in and amongst these boys. So um, yeah, it's ready to show my skills. Pep Talk covered you at the press conference. <laughs> Pep Talk covered you at the media workout, and now the fight. How how have you felt? Because you are somewhat getting a lot of attention around this fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, yeah, I'm definitely grateful. Um, um, first and foremost, for even being invited to the show, and then and again, like the attention that you're getting from it. Because again, you could just be a name on the show, and no, no one pays any notice. So I think that my boxing has, has done has s- s- spoken for me correctly. So that's why I'm getting the um, the attention. I just got to perform on the night so that I can continue to get invited to these type of shows. A little bird tells me you got a bit of an army coming with you to come watch you at this fight. <laughs> yeah, I always got something, some a, a little, um, a good little following. But yeah, this time around where it was a bit, um, uh, because it was a Friday night, I was a bit tentative as to whether or not I would be able to um, hit the numbers. Yeah, because I've still got to sell tickets. To, so um, yeah, but it's done good, done good. Yeah, I'm glad. I, for the tape, I did not mention the name of the little bird. So <laughs> don't come punch me up, woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There is not even a little bird, it's a huge bird. <laughs> Don't be doing that. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get beaten up, not you. You are you can at least pop. The I'm just gonna get plastered by the lady. The which, huge bird. The huge bird. Dwayne, as always, give a shout out for your social media so the guys can give you a follow. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's Dwayne Hotshot Sinclair or Hotshot Sinclair on the uh, Facebook, Twitter and uh, Instagram. As always my brother, pleasure interviewing you. Thank you you have much. a good fight. Thank you. I'll be there. Shouting my shouting everything I have at. Right? My little me will be shouting away for you. Alright? Alright, so I'm going. Love you, Cheers, buddy. Right. Hot shot, hot shot. Finally, let's hear from a man who was two and oh. They call him Uncle T. It's Tunji Ogunia. <laughs> Pep Talk UK are joined by a young man who's overdue an interview. He's been giving me grief about it. Yeah. And he's got a mouth on him, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. Well, um, since you say I've got a mouth on me, I'm just going to try and correct you. I'm not that young. <laughs> <laughs> 35 years of age. You know, but, um, yeah, but fi- fi- I'll, I'll take that, though, that young thing. <laughs> Give the listeners your name. My name is Baba Tunji Ogunia. Tunji Ogunia, Uncle T. Um, known as it's my boxing or Uncle TKO. 
Now, first and foremost, where yes. did you get the name Uncle T from? Um, I thought it was... I think it must be like a Nigerian thing. You know, a lot of people say uncles, uncles. So, because my name is Tunji, it was just easier for people to call me Uncle T. And maybe it's because it's due to my age as well. I just started boxing quite late. So, like, what, well, you're trying to be an uncle in the boxing world? I was like, yeah, why not? I just took, I just took the name and then um, ride with it. Now, I saw you at your last fight. Yes. It turned into a bit of a tear up, didn't it? Yes, yes. Um, it, was a, it was a tough opponent. I chose, I, I, I chose to have a tough opponent with, um, that could, um, so I could see where I am in boxing. I'm just, I just don't want to just go through just journeymen and just waste my time. You know, I just want to want to have meaningful fights. And so that guy, um, Jordan Granham, he won, he won a few things as an amateur. His first 26 fights, he didn't lose. So he was a good, he was a very very good boxer. Um, I could have easily found a, a plumber from Bulgaria and not, not knocked him out within the first round, but I didn't want that because a lot of, a lot of my friends. Um, pay good money to come and see me so I just want to make sure they're entertaining they're entertained and want to come back and see me um, so hopefully I think I achieve that yeah now I'm going to call you Uncle T because yes, I like the sound yes, that makes yeah. me sound young yeah, yeah. I'm younger than 35 by the way <laughs> stop I laughing. believe you I believe you <laughs> stop laughing if you weren't a boxer I'd force that issue um, you're now been catapulted to fighting on a haymaker card yes. at the O2 Yes, it's upon us. Any yes. butterflies? No, no, no. Um, what will be will be is the attitude that I like to have. There's no point. I've, I've watched a lot of boxing and I've lo- watched a lot of people in that step up into like, you know, a big step up and like a big occasion like this. And um, there's no point. Th- I'm not going to think too much into it. I'm just going to act as if it's just normal with me. I'm just trying to have it with him my own stride and just think and with age I think it'd be easier for me to do that as opposed to like being like a young teenager who's just you know trying to go for the knockout because that's not what I'm going to try and do I'm going to try my best of my ability to just box and because I believe I could box and whatever happens after that would happen now I'm there fight night so I'll be cheering you on yes thank you for the listeners that want to give you a follow on social media what are your handles how can they follow you you can find me mainly on Instagram is what I use I hardly use my Twitter it's Uncle T Boxing Uncle T Boxing uh, Instagram Uncle T we wish you the best of luck go get that win okay thank you very much cheers Uncle T take care cracking interviews it's all about fight night this Friday at the O2 Arena let's go Right, now it's football time. So, as ever, we're going to talk about the Premier League. We're going to predict the big games of the weekend. And the biggest match that we feature, first and foremost, is Tottenham versus Liverpool. Now, Pascal. Wait. Tottenham's still looking solid. Harry Kane is in magnificent form. Which way is this game going to go? Uh, it's a very difficult one for me to call because I dislike both of the teams. But um, <laughs> but in terms of I mean in terms of form, you know Tottenham are in very good form. They are very well organized, and uh, you know the recent game in the Champions League against Real Madrid showed that you know they're no longer scared of yeah. big big clubs. Got a good you know, draw against Real. They, they have they, they had a very good role and, and they should have uh, won that match they had two clear cut chances they should have won I that mean, match look I said before um, you know to, to a couple of friends of mine had Harry Kane to, to me shown some vulnerabilities in his confidence because if that was Sunderland or Swansea that would have been in the back <laughs> of the net but I think he bottled it a bit you know I think he was he, you know it's a bit like um, well, it was a great you, save though from Navas it was a save was, yeah. I mean, uh, it was a very good save, but there was also an, uh, 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 an opportunity for him to to put it in a corner of of the net, and uh, he went that went very wide. And in his mind, he had he had already scored a goal, and I don't believe that he, he kept his 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 cool. And uh, as a result of that, you know, he, he missed completely. But you know, Harry Kane is, is is a problem in the Premiership. You know, he's he's proven time and time again that he's a reliable, dependable striker one of the best in the division you know at the very same time you know we have a Liverpool side that did also very well in the Champions League this week 
and we have a Jurgen Klopp who also wants to assert himself as you know as as a as a as a manager that understands the Premier League and, and I can compete at the at, at the highest level. But if I'm totally honest, I think that the advantage is for Tottenham. I think Tottenham in Pochettino have got a, a good balanced team. You know. Yeah. S- Serge Aurier is a, you know, it was a very good ac- acquisition. They have a very mm-hmm. good goalkeeper in uh, Hugh, Hugo Loris. Loris, your, and, your, your countryman. Uh, fantastic of course, saves. Yeah. Oh, fantastic saves and also let's uh, big up Moussa Sissoko. You know, another <laughs> Frenchman. You know, and, and, uh, you know, and they are finding themselves, they are creating a brand of football that is unique to them. And, and I mean, it's difficult to say this, but uh, Tottenham are becoming, you know, a more and more established team in the Premiership where, mm-hmm. you know, we're seeing, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, 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 a resurgence in, in, in the Tottenham of, of, of old now it's becoming a very good side so to me I, I'm, I'm being brutally honest I believe that Tottenham may well win that this the game two goals to one I expect Liverpool to, to press early to press quite aggressively you know uh, the likes of Coutinho and Firmino are still very much on form you know, and despite Malin's absence, they are the top players that can change the game, you know, with their creativity, with their desire. And the pace, but, yep. And the pace, but for me, defensively, Tottenham are better organized. They've got the better defense. The midfield also in Wanyama, you know, and Deli Ali is quite, quite a good midfield also. And, uh, going forward, I mean, they have the best striker, one of the best strikers in the Premier League, let alone around the world at least in the top 10 so it can only go one way and that's a Tottenham win you know so 2-1 Tottenham is my prediction 2-1 to the Tottenham oh wow I kind of feel sick when you're saying that being an Arsenal fan now um, now Ransom Bands, um Spurs solid as ever a white heart lane or Wembley now it is yeah. uh, wh- how do you see this game going because Liverpool we know that they're a counter attacking team and um, in the big spaces of Wembley Stadium this could be, you know, uh, for me, it could be a Liverpool victory. I, I'm, I'm leaning more towards that as well. I think that Liverpool have been so poor. I just feel like if there's ever going to be a time for them to pick up some points, I think it's going to be now, mate, to be honest. And, um, yeah, everyone's talking about Tottenham and that. Their, their record at Wembley isn't all that. It's been atrocious. Be a, One win. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not good. So, people have to take that into account as well, man. But... Yeah, I think that Liverpool, I think it'll be a draw, a Liverpool win. I don't think Tottenham are going to win this one. Yeah, And, and, and saying that as well, Oxlade-Chamberlain, you know, um, all those jokes about the receipt, there's no returns from the Arsenal fans. Um, yeah. You know, he managed to get a goal in Europe and Liverpool managed to bang seven, you know, against Maribo, I think it was. Yeah, um, Maribo are pants anyway. They're playing a, a, bunch, <laughs> a, a bunch of school teachers and that. Like, I don't read into that result at all. <laughs> But you know, but but being real, Liverpool have um, they have you know they have great attacking prowess. So this could be um, yeah, you know I agree. They with do. You. Tottenham have a very good defence though, so it's one of them ones where that game really has got um, draw written all over it, mate. Mm. So you're going draw for a draw? All over it. Yeah, I'm going for a draw, probably one win. I will go for a Liverpool two 0 win. I won't say Oxlade Chamberlain. I can't say that that name anymore. <coughs> Makes me feel sick. Um, <laughs> yeah, it could be a 2-0 Liverpool victory. I just think Liverpool are going to exploit the wide spaces of the Wembley pitch, mate. Now, moving on to Ransom Bant's team. Man United. Yeah, it's Huddersfield. Hard yeah. Huddersfield. Now, look, let's be real. This is easy work. Yeah, it is 4-0 again. 4-0 again. Honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm leaning more towards that. Yeah, it's going to be 3-4. <laughs> 3-4-0 like easy work man I, I'm yeah I don't see why not like the smaller teams hasn't really been our problem it's picking up points away from home against the top teams which has been our downfall like it's a bit more of the same I think we're the dispatch of Huddersfield yeah so in terms of Mourinho right it's, in, it's just interesting because a lot of um, uh, supporters of other teams they're saying that Mourinho is killing football with his tactics like he did against Liverpool at Anfield would you agree? Nah, it's nonsense to me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute nonsense, bro. At the end of the day, Mourinho plays winning football. The best football is winning football. There's no point playing like Barcelona or Man City and that if you don't get the result. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Or, like, or Arsenal. The day, yeah. Or Arsenal. Do you know what I mean? Arsenal have been famous for playing pretty football and winning nothing. Like, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, when your name's on the trophy, it doesn't say how well you played. 
you know what I mean it just says did you win yes or no and that's it so some games aren't going to be as pretty as others I don't really care no matter who's in charge you've got to be able to mix it up man if you've got no plan B you end up like Arsenal and that's the biggest criticism of Arsenal <laughs> when it goes well with Arsenal it looks pretty it looks great total football all of that rubbish but then when they need to dig in and find and find a plan B more often than not um, they come up short mate you know what I mean so I'm yeah. all for playing pragmatic football I'd rather that yeah, and you know what you can with Marina what he tends to do is he tends to set his teams up you know um, to get as much points as possible until Christmas and then he starts to be a little bit more um, um, savvy you know get a, get a draw here or there or whatever but that's you know? what I mean he manages it like you got to realise he's won he is not one that many yeah. leagues there's Trophies calculation in it. What he's doing. There's he definitely calculation. And yeah. he says, you know what? If we get a point here, get three points here, get a point here. Do you know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. And then obviously he's looking at other teams' fixtures as well and saying, you know what? This team's probably going to drop points here. This guy has done it throughout his career in several different countries, not just here. Would, would you? you mean? He's won the league in four different countries. Yeah, 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 real talk. Well, would you say though, you know, again, a criticism of Marino is that he's a money manager. I mean, it, yeah, come yeah. Uh, what? Well, has Pep Guardiola not spent half a billion quid, <laughs> mate, in two seasons and he's yet to register a trophy? Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to hear this money manager rubbish. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Because Pep Guardiola inherited the best squad in the league and won nothing last season and, and everyone's just letting him off. So I'm not really trying to hear that money manager yeah. crap, to be and, honest. Everyone's just. Yeah. We're labeling that against Mourinho because they don't like him because he wins. It's as simple as that. Everyone loves L- Jurgen Klopp because he's a loser, mate. <laughs> he just gets the finals. <laughs> he just gets the finals and loses, and then, he, and then he wants to be friends with all the press. So everyone loves him. He's a loser, and everyone loves a loser in this country. That's just how it is. <laughs> You're a ransom. He goes in, man. He goes. He goes hard on the paint like Waka Flocka. I must say. But it's good news for Carlos Dakam then, you know. Yeah, that's it. They love a loser, man. They love a loser. It's all about taking part in this place. Oh, Klopp's such a nice guy. He's a bum. He's got a worse bloody um, record than Moyes and Rogers, and he's still in a job. He should have been sacked a long time ago. But yeah. Liverpool yeah. aren't a big club anymore, so who are they going to yeah. sack him? But, but how, yeah. do I, how do I feel as an Arsenal fan? Talking about how people should have been sacked a long time ago. You know, constant failure. Constant. But the funny thing about yeah. Arsenal is, yeah. With the players and the squad that that Wenger's had, he's been overachieving for quite a while, and it just so happens now that it, um, everyone around you has gotten better and you haven't. That's all that's happened. Do you know what I mean? Arsenal haven't gotten that much worse than usual. It's just that teams like Everton can spend 100 and, 180 million in transfer window. Do you know what I mean? Like that. That's how football's gone now. Arsenal, mm. um, Arsene just hasn't evolved with the game. That's that's all the times, yeah, that's, that's real talk. He hasn't evolved with the game. He's still a good coach. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the thing is, other teams have gotten better. Like Liverpool are better now than they were. Tottenham are better now than they were. Mm-hmm. So all that's happened is um, you lot have just slid down the pecking order. That's all that's happened. You haven't necessarily got worse. It's just that everyone else is getting better. Like. Comfortably, but, you say Tottenham are better than Arsenal now. You can't even argue that. Yeah, yeah, they're better than Arsenal now. <coughs> Sorry, I feel you, sick. I feel sick once again. Do you know what I'm I, saying? And that, and that hasn't been the case through our whole lifetime. So because of that, <laughs> you have to look at that and say that's the real reason why um, Arsenal are looking as bad as they are, man. That's the real reason. Pascal, predict the game. How does Fulham versus Man United? What's your well, prediction? It's, it's a foregone conclusion. You know, I mean, Manchester United. You know, bet- between the history of the of the both clubs, Manchester United won 20 games, Trons 15, and lost 10 games. So, you know, with the kind of squad they have at the moment and the kind of momentum that Manchester United has has achieved over the start of the season, it's I expect a Manchester United performance, a dominant performance. Lukaku will probably score a couple of goals, and uh, you know, he'll probably be two 0 by by half time you know what Mourinho may, may well do is play expensive football you know and, and maybe be quite creative and as long as they are winning comfortably and not considering a, a clean sheet we can actually see, we will probably see a very good and entertaining game of, of football with constant pressure applied by Manchester onto 
Huddersfield. The only way I can see Huddersfield scoring a goal is probably through a set piece of, of some sort, a corner or, or some kind of a free kick. But, uh, but even so, you know, Manchester United will comfortably win that game. So anybody doing an accumulator, I think that um, Manchester United should be at top of the list. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I, I agree with both gentlemen. Man United, 4 0. 4 0 after 90 minutes. Lukaku's going to get a couple. Rashford might chip in. Mikatarian, uh, it's going to be easy nah, work. Uh, Mickey ain't scoring, man. Mickey's been rubbish, mate. <laughs> but this, this is the right rubbish. time. This is, this is he, the right time to score against Huddersfield, mate. You know? He's getting on my nerves, mate. I don't even know why he's still on the pitch now. <laughs> he's doing my nut. Him and Marcus Rashford have been poor this season, man. Rashford's got a few goals, but. He's been pants, mate. Like he's been absolutely pants. So you think, you think that's the reason why Marino's potentially looking at Ozil? I don't know. I think Ozil wants to come anyway. And the thing is, he had his best seasons under Mourinho at um, Madrid. But Ozil, look, like with better players around him, which you will have at United, you'll see a different Ozil, mm-hmm. man. I do, I do rate him. I do rate him, man. Like it's just one of them things with Mesut Ozil. Like he needs runners around him because he sees things in it that other players don't see. So I think if he's got um, better players around him and pace, more pace around him, he'll thrive. But I just don't know, man. I think that Rashford, Rashford's been poor, man, for me. Mickey's been poor for me. Mickey hasn't turned up to to any half decent games at the moment, and his stats are um, getting him off me. Um, yeah, he's I, got quite a few assists. That's the he, but he's got he's got at least seven, mate. Mm-hmm. You know what he's I mean? got but quite he, a few, yeah. That's why I can't deal with football these days, man. Like when yeah. I was growing up, you knew who played well because you saw, mm-hmm. and now people want to show you stats and how Lots much they stats. ran and all that yeah, crap. Yeah. I don't care about that yeah. because you know. You know I mean? Do you remember when Arteta played for Arsenal? He yeah. has some incredible stats. Yeah, his pass accuracy was in the high night. The same with Joe Allen and these lot were talking about <laughs> Like, drop me out. Joe Allen's crap. He always has been. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't care. The reason why he's got 98 pass accuracy is because he's passing sideways five yards. Yeah, sideways and then back to the keeper. <laughs> and that's what I mean. He, he now, Marcus Rashford's had a crap game and they're showing his, he's saying he's had four attempts, three on target. Like, do you know what I mean? And one goal. It makes it look like he's had a great game. He hasn't. He's been poor. Do you know what I mean? And that's what his stats can just um, can cover up and dress up everything. Do you know what I mean? I'm glad Martial's on now anyway. Proper proper footballer, man. Martial, I know Venga wants him. But speaking of yeah, Arsenal... Not, not yeah. Tony, <laughs> Spe- speaking of Arsenal, um, we move on to Arsenal Everton. Arsenal going to wipe the floor with Everton, I think. Oh, yeah? Everyone's saying Everton's oh. going to be a hard game for Arsenal. I think after losing to Watford, Arsenal going to make a statement and probably beat Everton like 3 I, um, I don't know. I don't know, you know. Arsenal... You just don't know what Arsenal's going to turn up. You know, Arsenal take the lead against Watford. You think happy days. You know, they're going to get a victory and they're going to climb up the table. But then it's Arsenal, isn't it? They just concede a silly goal, which for me, it wasn't a penalty, but he invited he invited the man to take the dive in the first place. Absolutely. So he invited him. I mean, how the silly. stupidity, man. Yeah, how silly. The second goal as well was ping pong around the box. But I mean, where are your leaders to command that box in the first place? So Arsenal, I just don't know. I can't predict Arsenal games. I just don't know what they're going to do. But yeah, yeah. this could be a draw at best for Arsenal. I don't know. I just don't I don't see them losing two games on a bounce. I don't see them dropping points two games on a bounce. Really, I think because they dropped the game, they lost the game you weren't expecting them to win, I think they'll win this one quite comfortably. Arsenal don't really have problems against the big teams, though. They don't really have problems against the big teams, man. They seem to kind of get up for them games. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just it's the small games that always seem to trip them up, and that's where we're doing more of the season, man. I always say you win the league by not losing to your your rivals away from home, but you have to beat the smaller teams. Yeah, and there's more smaller teams than bigger teams, so well, it makes sense. That's makes it, sense. Law of averages. Years, when you look at the head-to-heads, LBG was top of the head-to-heads. Um, and what he didn't even finish in the top four so it means nothing Klopp was head, top of the head to head last season what did he win nothing head to heads don't mean that much I'm telling you it's all about the little teams around you mm-hmm. that you need to make sure that you don't lose to indeed what about you Pascal um, will will Arsenal show uh, as Austin Wenger says mental strength to, to come back well I, <laughs> it, it depends uh, if we can get a good uh, you know uh, 
a good run in in the next couple of games. I think that he will certainly help the team, you know, rediscover some some form. I mean, in terms of playing Everton, I think it's probably the best time of the season to play them. You know, they've only won two games, you know, this season, and uh, they they are languishing at uh, you know at number 16 on on the on the table. So they're at the bottom, and I think that the morale is very low. Um, I dare to say there's a bit of a crisis at uh, Goodison Park and as, as a result of that I think that if Arsene Wenger you know selects the team properly it's a, it's a bad selection on, on on Sunday you know if, if the game is not uh, if, if Arsene Wenger doesn't select the the right kind of selection I think we could be in, in trouble so it's about making sure that when Ronald Koeman looks at a team sheet you know he literally shits his pants and says bloody hell it's going to be very difficult Difficult. Because if we play an attacking formation, you know, which, which shows intent, which shows that we want to score goals, there's an opportunity for Arsenal to, to probably win the game in dominant fashion. But if, if, if Edgar has been tentative, and also if, if more injuries, you know, also take place, you know, that, that's, the, that's the concern. Because uh, at the moment, the, 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 the Arsenal defensive frailties are, are being, being exposed. Laurent Cosserly is not going to be playing that game. You know, uh, Callum Chambers is also injured. So it's, there's going to be some, some difficulties in ensuring that the Arsenal back four, you know, or back three, you know, as, as Wenger like to do it these days, three at the back, <laughs> you know. We, we, we need to make sure that we, we are not uh, leaking any more goals. So uh, I'd like to, to, to see, you know, the likes of Jack Wilshere being selected for this particular game. I believe that he should be given an opportunity. You know, Everton, it used to be a very good game. It used to be a very big game a few seasons ago. But given the current form of the squad, you know, I think that Wenger can go there quite confidently. So, you know, for me, I can probably see that Arsenal would probably go to score two goals. Uh, whether I keep a clean sheet, I'm not sure because if anybody can score against Arsenal in the crisis period, is probably Everton. You know, probably will, will take advantage of that. And we all know that Ronald Koeman dislikes Arsene Wenger. Yeah, as, yeah, he's got a he's as, got a leg up on Wenger. He doesn't in like him. He doesn't like him like DT and troops want him to go. So, you know, mm. it's it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be a very difficult game, very tense game, very emotional game. You know, could be, it could be. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens with Arsenal. Like I said, we don't know mm. what Arsenal's going to turn up. Mm. But we move on to Chelsea. Chelsea versus Watford and uh, London derby. Now another crisis down there, mate. Yeah, I don't know what's happened to Chelsea. Um, one year, I do. The manager wanted to leave, and the manager wanted to leave from the summer. To be completely honest, yeah. do you feel he's not been backed? But it's not that he hasn't been back, man. Chelsea <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't as attractive as they used to be, mate. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? The Lukaku turned them down. Yeah, you know I mean, like they're missing out on players, man. Like they didn't get the first choice player in any position, really. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what it is. Even looks like Chamberlain turned them down. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, we don't end up buying Danny Junko. Like, come on. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. That's a successful that's uh, window. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, the manager didn't get the players. The manager put his life on having Lukaku. He thought he had him. Do you know what I mean? Like, and you know the kind of man, the kind of striker that the manager likes from he's playing back Schweiz and like, he likes a big strong striker and he thought he had Lukaku he missed out on him he took Morata because that's what was left do you know what I mean and he just Chelsea are just in ruins mate I'm telling you and they, and they sold us Matic I don't know why but I'm grateful do you know what I mean Oh, that was a big mistake. I don't know yeah. why. He's, he's Strengthening the rifle. He's come. Like, that guy is just sweeping up everything, man. Like, he's different class. He's different class. And he's he showing just how much they took him for granted last season. But it's crazy because the Chelsea pattern with a manager. New manager comes in. Everything's great. He wins the title. And then the second season, it's just like it goes always goes downhill. That's, that's really but strange. That's because... The manager goes there for the money. You know what I mean? And the thing is, <laughs> the man always backs his manager in the first season. Always. He gives them the money they want. But then in the second season, he's like, all right, cool, you've won the league. So, and then he closes the checkbook. And then he starts giving them <laughs> players that they don't want. You know what I mean? That's what happens. It happens all the time. That's why Jose left, came back and left again. Because he's giving him players that he don't want. Like, I mean, and he's famous for that, um, Abramovich. You can't tell me that Jose signed Shevchenko. You know what I mean? That's just how it is, man. Chelsea. It it was almost like when they signed Shevchenko, it was almost like they signed, you know, his twin brother that wasn't the real Shevchenko. He was was that bad. But there you go. And then after Falcao bombed at United, 
they get a the top five cow as well. I was thinking this can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> That was really strange, I must say. So, yeah, Chelsea are, are doing what Chelsea do, mate. Implode. Second season implosion. Now, yep, and they always blame the manager, but it's not the manager. The club's a state, innit? Like, the club's got no no um, personality. It's got no culture. Do you know what I mean? And they're just they're a plastic club, mate. And that's what it is. Established in 1992, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 It will say, you know, no history. You know, we sing that to Louis Benevenuti all the time. No history. They got yeah. no history whatsoever, man. They used to be an FA Cup team. That's what they were. Man like, man like uh, Mark Steen and them guys, John Spencer, all them players, man. I remember those little diminutive players for Chelsea. Well, I'm telling yeah. you, that's what I'm trying to say, man. If Dennis Wise can wear armband at your club, your club's not saying anything. <laughs> but, De- but Dennis Wise was about that life though he was about that life you know yeah, what he did to the taxi come, the taxi man like, like, like yeah. the fan man he was just a hooligan yeah, I mean, that's just all that's all that's all it was man that's all it was man Chelsea have been rubbish for a while they've got a bit of money they're doing a little bit Manjo wants to go back to Italy and he's not settled and that's what it boils down to and yeah fair enough he won the league but he won the league with Mourinho's squad people are forgetting he only signed one player he won the league with a squad that had won the league previously um, less than two years before that. So he didn't do anything magnificent. Jose had already proven he could win the league with that same bunch of players. So I don't know why people are going on like he done something amazing. He didn't. I always said, judge him in his second season when he's not playing one game a week mm-hmm. and see what he's doing. And right now, he's proven, again, like the Premier League always does with a lot of these foreign managers, it shows what they're really about. Him and Jurgen Klopp not impressed me. <laughs> uh, so, so predictions for you? Score predictions? Yeah, it's Watford. They'll beat Watford, man. Do you know what I mean? Like 3-1 yeah. or something like that. Do you know what I mean? But either way, Chelsea, it's going to be a strange season right now. Long season. But it's yeah. going to be a strange season because you look at the two Manchester teams and you look at Tottenham, but then Chelsea, Arsenal and Liverpool are just looking really inconsistent. I don't know what's going on. They're looking quite frail. Yeah, teams. all of them. All of them yeah. are looking like they could drop points at any time. So, like, that's looking like a race for fourth place between them three, mate. You know, I'll go to church on Sunday and I'll pray that Arsenal show some more mental strength, mate, as Wenger says. <laughs> 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 right, um, Pascal, um, Chelsea, Watford, your predictions? Do you, do you know because we lost against Watford I hope that Watford you know I hope that last lightning strikes strikes a second time against Chelsea you know because that will show that you know this is a new Watford essentially that that is uh, you know resurging out of nowhere you know yeah. I, I'd, I'd like I'd like Watford to win you know I mean let's you know if we look statistically they only lost to Manchester City this season as far as the, as far as the big clubs are concerned you know they drew a drama um, uh, game against Liverpool they managed to come back um, against Arsenal you know they they were a bit unlucky in the first in the first half but they, they came back and they won the game and you know and to, to me they certainly you know I don't see no reason why that uh, that win against Arsenal can can motivate the, the Watford players to go again against you know uh, Chelsea I mean if Crystal Palace can do it Watford can do it too oh yeah yeah you know? that's true you know, so they're a better team than Crystal Palace, in my opinion. So, you know, uh, it, it could well be it could well be another surprise victory. You know, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll certainly find out if uh, Chelsea lack Kahunis, as George yeah. said. <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll certainly find out, but it, it's possible. You know, it's possible. They, 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 you know, this this Watford team have got some interesting players. They've got Capoue, they've got Cleverly. You know, they've uh, they've also got a very good manager in Marco C. Silva. You know, so they, there's there's a there's a new, there's a different kind of um, you know a, a player um, players rather at Watford that they never had before. There's a bit more flair. You know, the manager is also a bit more technical. Than, than the ones they've had before and I don't see why Watford cannot believe in themselves and go against Chelsea 
you know, it's a vulnerable Chelsea. Chelsea have to win, you know. They lost against Palace. They have to come there and win. So there's a lot of pressure on the players. And, uh, you know, when there's pressure, sometimes pressure boss pipes, as they say, but also you got, pressure can be contained. And let's just see whether, what further the pressure cooker that can contain the pressure that Chelsea will be applying on them. So I'd like to see it to be a win for Watford, but if I'm brutally honest, uh, I'm leaning more towards a two, two or draw. I think that to be a two or draw, which would be a bad result for Chelsea <laughs> anyway. But uh, a two to draw would, could actually be a very good result for everybody, including Watford. I, I will go for a, a 2 0 Chelsea victory. I think Chelsea will get back on track. I think uh, Conte, you know, he's someone that he, he will definitely get the players up for it this time round. And I think there'll be no shocks. I think it'll be 2 0 to the Chelsea. Right, guys, that's our time. Um, I'd like to thank Joey Bass, Ransom Bance, and Pascal. Join us again next week for another Pep Talk UK podcast. Thank you, thank you. Nice one. Pep Talk UK.